All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We are live. We are live. Um, we are live on Facebook, on all the platforms, um, Life Excel group, Life Excel page, Success Convert page, Intentional Excellence page, my personal page, and my personal profile. We are also live on YouTube, on Life Excel TV, as well as on my YouTube channel, Dr. Ape Omede. Um, I can see people already here. Uh, let me quickly say hello to everyone that I can see. Um, first of all, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I hope everyone is hearing me um, so that I won't be just speaking to myself. Uh, so good morning, Isaac. Good morning, Ojama. Good morning, um, uh, Dr. Sam, um, sorry, Sam Simako. Oh, maybe I'm prophesying. <laughs> we had Dr. Sam yesterday. So everything that happened yesterday is still in my head. It was such a powerful time. Sam Simako, I can see you. Good. Um, um, Emmanuel, I can see you. Anytime, I can see you as well. So everybody, you're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. How was your night? I hope, I hope you are yet to recover from <laughs> last night's session. It was so powerful. It was so, 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 so powerful. Dr. Sam Mekundaya was on fire. It was on fire and it was a great way to start the session um, or the conference rather. And I'm really looking forward to um, this morning. I'm really, really, really looking forward to this morning. Uh, Dr. Michael Akinlabi uh, is coming on to share with us. Dr. Mike is a great and a phenomenal man, and he has a wonderful story. So I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to nudge him <laughs> to share his story. I hope we'll have time to, to do all that so that he, he doesn't interfere with whatever he has to share with us today. But I will see how that goes, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, Sheena, can you hear me? Let me add you on the stream. Um, let's see if you can hear me. Sheila, can you hear me? If you if you are on with us uh, and you're ready for today, I'd like you to um, let me know so that we will kick off as quickly as possible. Um, you're free to put your camera on as well so that we can see your handsome face. All right. So um, I was saying that today is going to be a wonderful day, a great day, because um, Dr. Mike Akinlabi is ready and he'll be speaking to us. Last night was very wonderful. And we really, really um, had a good time. So I will just say a short prayer and then we'll take it from there. So if you don't mind, um, you can join me for that. So let's pray. Father, we thank you um, for last night. We thank you for what you did and the impact, the words that um, were released onto us. We thank you because we left the first session last night better people. And we've come back this morning again. And we, we, we pray and we believe that you're going to use Michael Lakinlabi to, to nudge us and push us forward towards our call, our destiny and purpose. To become a people of excellence, radiating your glory in our time and in our generation, and all this shall be to the glory of your holy name. Thank you for everyone who is going to join, and thank you for everyone that has joined already, and I pray that we all will live a better people. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining me in that uh, prayer. Um, and... Uh, Sule, you're welcome. Good morning. Uh, nice to see you. So we're going to kick off quickly because uh, Dr. Michael Akinlabi will be here with us very, very soon. So um, some people might be asking why um, or what is an Intentional Excellence Conference all about and why the team be positioning for um, excellence. All right. So uh, like I said yesterday, we um, started this year as an organization, as a group, as a community, talking about all around excellence. And uh, we did that looking at excellence in different areas and dimensions of our lives. We um, 
try to ensure that every area of our life experiences a touch of excellence because we believe that that is what God has called us to. Just like, you know, Coach Sam told us yesterday um, that we are called unto excellence. We are called unto excellence and we believe in life excellence that if you have an encounter with the divine, then something should happen to your capacity to be an excellent person. So um, throughout this year, we've been looking at all around excellence. We talked about excellence in vision, in career, in, in finances, in business, in wisdom, um, uh, you know, in relationships and, and all that. And we really, really had a good time. And so as the year was rounding, it was put in our heart to further reposition ourselves for excellence in the year 2023 and beyond. You know, so that is to say that whatever we have experienced in 2022, we have to build on in 2023. So we've talked about how to excel in every other areas of our lives or in all the areas of our life. Now in 2023, we have to put ourselves in a position where we will be able to manifest that excellence. So the, the essence of the, this year's team is to raise and prepare and empower a generation of people that will manifest excellence in all the works of their lives in 2022 and beyond. So that's what we're doing or what we want to do, uh, what, what we want to achieve with this conference and the team this year to help raise, prepare and empower you, empower our generation, empower the young people that are in our community so that they will manifest excellence in every area of their lives in the year 2022 and beyond. So at the end of this conference, we want to look back and tell ourselves that I have picked up the tools, I have picked up the resources, I have picked up the skills, the knowledge, just like Nukot Sam shared with us yesterday about seven things, seven steps that we can take to become a people of excellence. You know, So by the end of the conference, we want to say, I have learned one or two or three things. I have, I have made one or two or three decisions. Uh, I want to take one or two or three steps that will make me an excellent person in everything that I do in 2023. Remember what Kosam said yesterday. He said that before you are promoted, it is because people have seen the excellence in what you're doing. You don't wait to be promoted before you begin to showcase excellence. It is the excellence you show today that guarantees the promotion for tomorrow, all right? So have that at the back of your mind that you need to be a person of excellence to get to where you want to be in life and in destiny. So in this conference, we're preparing ourselves, we are, we are empowering ourselves to become a people of excellence in our time and in our generation and to the glory um, of God. So that's basically what um, the conference is all about, especially for this year. All right, so I'll keep going while I wait for Sheena to, to come on board, um, to anchor with me. I hope he gets everything sorted, but I'll keep on going. So now let me quickly um, share the vision of Life Excel with you. For those of us who might be uh, joining us for the first time or who don't have clear understanding of what Life Excel is all about, I'll just quickly run now. Um, uh, you know the some some of the um, core points or core ideas about what we do in Life Excel and how we go about them. So, uh, who who are we? That's the first question. We are a faith based youth and community development organization. That is what we are. We are faith based because we have a belief system. We are youth led because everybody in the team is a young person, including myself. I'm getting old, but yes, I'm still. A uh, very young person. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at my body structure, you would you would be um, uh, which word would I use now? You will guess my age wrongly, and that keeps me within you know, the domain of young people. So I'm still a young person. Um, we're into we're into personal development, capacity building, and all that. So we, Life Excel generally is a faith based youth and community development organization that inspires young people to live their best life and radiate excellence in God. 
to live their best life and radiate excellence in God. And we do that through the instrumentality of our faith and our belief in the word of God, through the instrumentality of our encounter with God's word. Because in the word of God is all that we need to be the best that God has created us to be. So um, we envision a generation of young people who um, will, will make excellence come on in their, in their lifetime. And if you follow me on Facebook, uh, on, on Instagram, you always see that when I post some things, one of my hashtags is making excellence come on. Why? Because that is what I believe I'm cut out to do. That is what I believe I'm here to do, to make excellence come on in my time and in my generation. So what we are doing is to envision, is we're um, envisioning a generation of young people that will be inspired you know, to make excellence come on in their lifetime. And we do this through uh, our signature programs. If you're part of us, you know about Success Converge, which is what I just mentioned we ran throughout the beginning of this year, once every month. Uh, and we've, been, we've been doing that. And we have other programs that uh, we are looking forward to, you know, on, unleashing or releasing within the coming months and years. But one of the core signature programs that we use to achieve this is Success Converge. And this is our first edition of Intentional Excellence Conference. And like Dr. Sam told us yesterday, it's just the beginning of the programs that we're going to be using to reach out to young people, to help them make excellence come on in their life and in the generation. So we, want, we just want to be a go-to community for everyone who is seeking to live their best life and enjoy excellence in what, what they do. Right, so to be the go-to community for everyone seeking to live their best life and enjoy excellence in all they do. Okay, so that's our vision, and we we have seven core values that guide you know the the, the entire entirety of our activities or our actions, the things that we do. Right, so and I, I just want to highlight them quickly with you so that you can have them at the back of your mind and maybe it will be uh, an attraction to you to you know want to know more about life excel or come and part of what we are doing um so what are these core seven action uh, uh core action values for life excel and everybody in life excel so these are things we hold there as members of life excel and we allow them to guide uh, our lives and affairs so the first one is is that we believe in personal leadership and what personal leadership means to us is that you must lead yourself first before you can lead others. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are lacking in this particular area. Um, so if, if you're going to ever seek an opportunity to lead in any area, in any dimension, whether it is in, in your career or in business or even in your family, in, in a relationship and anything that you're involved with that people are connected to, and you want to showcase leadership. It requires you to, first of all, be able to lead yourself. And if you're able to lead yourself, then you will be able to um, lead other people. So it's very, very important um, you know, to us, very, very important to us that personal leadership is, is held um, as a valuable um, ideology. Uh, secondly, we believe in personal development. And what we mean by that is that you cannot give to others what you do not have. You cannot give to others what you do not have. So you have to work daily and continuously to improve on your skills, your talents, your gifts, your potentials, um, you know, develop them to a point where you now begin to use your talent, your skills and potentials to bless other people, to impact other people and impact your generation. And we believe strongly in that. We believe strongly in personal development. We emphasize it every day, every time. So everybody in Life Excel, make sure that you don't waste your time, but that you are investing your time in developing yourself so that you can give to other people what you have built up in yourself or what you've uh, you know, grown in yourself. And this is a follow-up to personal leadership because personal leadership drives you to personal development. Right. The third thing we put there is purpose-driven life. Uh, we believe that um, everybody has a God-given assignment, God-given unique assignment, God-given unique assignment, mm -hmm. and 
we, we believe, we do not allow ourselves to be distracted by other people and their own assignment because it's, it's sometimes we can, um, you know, get carried away by just like, you know, Dr. Sam also shared yesterday, sometimes we look at other people excelling and we begin to um, feel bad about ourselves, but we don't allow that in, in life itself. We believe that what other people are doing should be an inspiration for you to um, find out what you are here to do uh, as, as well. So, uh, fourth one is that we're passionate about success, you know. Uh, you cannot, we, we, we truly, truly believe that you cannot have success until you love, appreciate, and work towards it. You, you, you have to love success, you have to believe in success, you have to appreciate it, and you have to work towards it. I'm making all the sacrifices that are necessary for you to uh, become a successful person. So, um, the next is that we are positive about life. It is not all the time that you will be, you have the opportunity to be happy or be joyful. There are times that situations may come up that, you know, wouldn't be very palatable, you know, uh, but in Life Excel, one of our core values is that we are very positive about life. So no matter what happens to me, no matter what happens to you, we should always choose to be joyful and be happy because our reaction to what happens to us is what matters most. Number six is productive minded. All right. So uh, we believe that, uh, I, that, that we can only earn respect and honor from others when we have results to show for our lives. All right. So that helps you to be pro productive minded. You're always looking for opportunities to be productive. You're always looking for opportunity to, um, you know, create something that people will look at and honor you or value you for whatever you're producing. And then the last core action value in Life Excel is personal prosperity. Um, we believe that we will have and be the best that God has in mind for us in this lifetime and in the life to come. So uh, there are people who believe in eternal life, but there are idea of eternal life is when they die, right? So that's when they will enjoy all the things that God has um, in stock for them. And it's good. It's, it's okay. I mean, it, it's okay. But for us in Love Excel and for us to be able to drive um, our vision, we believe in, in personal pro prosperity and that whatever God has prepared for us is possible in this lifetime and in the life to come. So that's that's all about Life Excel. And if you want to know more, you can join uh, join our Facebook group, which I'm going to show on the screen now. Uh, the, the link to it for those who are probably not in the group yet. So if you go to that link, um, https um, column semicolon uh, forward slash double four slash bit dot ly forward slash Life Excel. FBG that will take you to our Facebook group. You can join and we will be happy to welcome you and um, and uh, you know take you through all, all, all the things that you need to know about Life Excel. Um, it's a beautiful community and full of great people that I believe will be a blessing to you. So thanks again everyone for coming. Um, Peace, Emmanuel. Thanks for all the comments. Uh, thank you very much for putting them down. Um, Shano, can you hear me now? I can hear you, sir. Great, great. I don't know if you can uh, hear me. Yes, I can hear you. How about your camera? We can't see you. <laughs> I, yes, I had to use my camera. I'm trying to. I've been trying to fix it. It's no. It's not really. I'm all really right. sorry about that, sir. No problem, no problem. So let's move. I just uh, while we wait for Dr. Mike Akinlabi to um, to come on on stage, uh, how did you find yesterday's session? Wow, it was it was really really awesome. I'm glad I was part of. Seriously, it was great. It was great. A really great session yesterday. Yeah, I yeah. learned a lot. Hmm. A great deal yesterday, and I believe everyone that did it too will will feel that way too. Yeah, it was a great session. 
It was a great session. Really, you know, really great. The, the way he, the way he, he, our event, live as early event, uh, some years back, and um, you know the way he, the way he broke down yesterday's session, I I, I saw a different perspective of excellence, and um, you know it really really motivated me to want to. It seems I have not been doing enough, you know that kind of thing. But, not uh, only I you. saw it in another yeah. light, and it's and I feel every I feel everyone should feel like that that yesterday, and um, seriously, yeah. And, um, but the most important thing is that we shouldn't allow it to just, you know, the fire was there and all that, but we have to just keep it burning. And, uh, you know, there, there's one thing we say that there is, uh, it's good to hear, but to put it in practice is, is the most important, uh, most important uh, aspect. You know, yeah. I've been trying to to start, uh, you, you gave an assignment yesterday and, uh, you know, I've been trying to, okay, go back to my board and uh, try to put those things down. Okay, I think I need to start planning afresh now. Mm. I, I, I was glad I was, I was part of the, the program yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah in fact, I, I felt the same way. The same way you felt was exactly how I felt. I was like, ah, I think I need to just go back to the drawing board <laughs> and uh, yeah. really, really yeah. think about, you know, what I want to achieve with, my life and my my time here on earth in terms of excellence. What do I want to be remembered for? Because he was just mentioning, what are you good at? What are you good at? And, you know, sometimes we just get so distracted, like he mentioned yesterday, with all the good things around us or all the good people around us mm -hmm. that we lose focus of our own goodness or the things that we can bring to the table. You know? And... I, I can always or easily find myself in that situation where I feel like, oh, okay, guys are already doing these things. People are already doing that thing. So there is no need for you know, me to um, stress myself to, um, you know, go okay. into that and do, and do the same thing. So, but then the question that we need to ask ourselves in this kind of situation or in that kind of situation where we think, begin to see people do the things that we want to do and we feel like, okay, all has been done is, is to ask ourselves that question. What is one thing that you are good at? What is one thing that you're good at? If you're able to find that one thing and yeah, yeah. work on it, build yourself up on it, train. He talked about you know, training. In fact, he said something he said that really, really shocked me. In all my life that I've been taking training, I've never taken a training of $30,000. If, when I got to the, to, to bed last night, I was like, what is happening? I think I need to just, you know, wake up because we need, yeah. we need, apart from knowing one thing you need to do, we need to also be prepared for it. Be prepared, yes. We need to also be prepared for that one thing. And this is one thing we need to be, you know, in a, in a position of excellence in 2023, knowing one thing that um, we need to do. Uh, one thing that we're, we, we, uh, uh, we, we, we are, are good, good at, at yeah, we are good at, sorry. And then we invest ourselves into learning and into empowering ourselves in knowledge and understanding so that we'll be able yeah. to deliver effectively on the, on those things that we are good at. So probably for those people who are not here, I can just run down uh, uh, the seven steps. Yeah, that, sorry, sir. Uh, there's one more thing I did okay. yeah. on that uh, program yesterday. And I think I've been in that uh, position for too long. He said, uh, one of the signs of mediocrity is when you focus on things you lack and not on things you already you have. I, you know, I remember this, that. I, yes, I started flashing back and there was a, a point in my life that I was, uh, I was in that position. Uh, you know, I, I would tell my wife, uh, I, don't, I, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I'm you know, qualified for it. I don't have what it takes. And I've been there for too long, and it uh, really affected me. Until I just, I just had to, I just had to come out of that, uh, of that, of that orientation. And before you know it, everything just, just, just went fell in line for me. You know, it's, 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 it's one of those things that affects most of us. 
we focus really on what we lack. We don't, what about those things that you have? If we, if we, if we dwell too much on what we lack, we are not going anywhere. That is just a fact. Mm-hmm. We are not going anywhere. So that's one. That's one. That's another thing I could uh, I could really really point out from that uh, event yesterday. So it's uh, it's something that we need to encourage ourselves. Even those watching us, encourage ourselves. Don't don't just dwell on those things you don't have. Don't dwell on those things you lack, because if you do, you are not going anywhere. That is just a fact. Excellence is not you are not on that way at all. So that's that's another thing, sir. Yeah. If you were at the event yesterday and you got a point, you can share with us in the comment while I and Shino are conversing about, you know, our own aspect of uh, how the search impacted us. And we're just waiting for Dr. Mike Kinlaby. I'm chatting with him um, and hoping he will be able to join soon. Um, Everything is good on my end, and Shino is here as well. So everything should be good on his end too. So we'll just wait for him as we continue, you know, having this conversation. Um, so if you were yes at, at the event yesterday and you were blessed, you can, you know, share with us um, what um, you learned as well, so that we can, you know, highlight it in in the comment. Um, so I, in fact, I I don't. Bro, I wrote down um, a lot of things. Just give me a minute. I think he's coming on now, maybe. Uh, let's read the transition. Okay, Dr. Sam is here. Dr. Mike is here. I'm still calling Dr. Sam. I'm still calling Dr. Sam. I guess if not. Recover from yesterday's event. <laughs> I am not recovered from yesterday's event. <laughs> Sir, you're on screen now. You're on screen now. We can, can you? Oh, we can't hear you yet. <laughs> I haven't recovered from yesterday's event. <laughs> oh my God. It was such a beautiful session. So the beautiful thing. So if you were at yesterday's event and you got something, please share with us in the comment. Uh, Dr. Sam yesterday said that it is one thing to know what to do and another to excel in it. We have not, we, are, we can't hear you yet, sir. So we'll just wait for you to get that sorted. Um, I think that was even the first thing he, he started with. Yeah, that one thing yes. is to know what to do, and I think to excel in it, and he tried to differentiate between excellence and perfection. Um, uh, excellence has to be in the position or uh, at work first before the title and position will catch up with you, and I mentioned that already also. Uh, he also said that nobody can be denied opportunities if they are excellent. Nobody can be denied an opportunity if they are excellent. You know, uh, so people complain about maybe not being promoted or not getting opportunities to grow in their career and business and all that. And what that meant to me is that if 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 you're a person of excellence, you'll be it will be very difficult for you to be missed. You know, when they are picking, when they when they are looking for people, always they will look for people who are excellent, and that's exactly. Perfect. Really, really just like cool. Daniel. Exactly. Just like Daniel and the yeah. spirit of excellence walking in his life. Mm-hmm. And when it was time, <laughs> when it was time to select people to lead, it was very easy to, 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 to pick him because he had he, he, he had exhibited an amount of excellence that even when I can't hear you still, sir. <laughs> we can't hear you yet. I think the mic, the mic is still muted or something. Uh, um, so, sir, you need to, uh, from what I can see here, your mic is not connected. You need to give access to your microphone. You need to give access to your microphone. Probably, probably go out, leave, and then try to come in again, maybe to ask you to uh, have a, give access to your microphone. Hello.
Yeah, okay. So we'll wait for the Dr. Dr. Mike Akinla bit to finish up the setting up and uh, we'll, we'll have him as soon as he is um, ready. Yeah, so uh, yeah, talking about Daniel, right? Um, he couldn't be denied because he was so excellent that the excellence was shutting the mouth of his enemies. I just pray that that mm -hmm. will also be our portion in 2023. Um, Amen. Uh, as we you know, position ourselves for Excellence. So can you hear me now? Perfect. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. See me, sir. It's a pleasure being here. Good to see you. Good and to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. We'll, we'll, we'll kick off with you in the next few minutes. So we're going to um, no go back to the the order of the program now um so i'll just share the, just share the vision that we are having a little bit of conversation about last night's session and just to refresh our minds uh, about what you know god bless us with in preparation for what we're going to receive uh, this morning so um all right so we'll move on now i'm going to Introduce Dr. Mike Akinlebi, and uh, after that, I'll hand over to him to do his thing. And then we'll come back again if there are any questions and ask uh, any questions, then we'll take them. If not, we'll just have a um, kind of end of session conversations, and that'll be it. Okay. Dr. Michael Akinlabi is a multi-award winning academic, criminologist, author. Dr. Michael Akinlabi is a multi-award winning academic, criminologist, author, consultant, minister of the gospel, and a motivational speaker who travels around the world teaching God's inspired wisdom to government leaders policymakers, businessmen and women, students. Dr. Michael Akinlabi is a multi-award winning academic, criminologist, author, consultant, minister of the gospel, and a motor Dr. Michael Akinlabi is a multi-award winning academic, criminologist, author, consultant, minister of the gospel, and a motive. Dr. Michael Akinlabi is a multi-award winning academic, criminologist, author, consultant, minister of the gospel, and a motivational speaker, who travels around the world teaching God's inspired wisdom to government leaders, policymakers, businessmen and women, students, and church congregations. Michael is an example of possibility and determination, having succeeded from a below average background to a celebrated global leader in academia and human capital development. Through the grace of God and sheer determination, he worked his way from being a motorboy, i.e., bus conductor, in the streets of Lagos, Nigeria, to a multi-award winning scholar of repute with full international scholarships to study at prestigious institutions of higher learning such as the Cambridge University in the United Kingdom and Griffith University in Australia. Dr. Akinlabi is a trained guidance counsellor, clinical psychologist and criminologist with PhD in Criminology and Criminal Justice, Griffith University, MPhil in Criminological Research, Cambridge, Master of Science in Clinical Psychology, Ibadan, and be in guidance and counseling with options in geography, Ibadan. Within the past 15 years, Michael has provided lectures, coordinated, and convened large undergraduate and postgraduate programs in intelligence and security studies, criminology, and psychology. He is currently a senior lecturer in criminology and criminal justice at Northumbria University in the United Kingdom. He is a comparative and interdisciplinary researcher who has successfully published in high-impact criminology journals and in edited books on policing and substance abuse. As a researcher with strong background in understanding human behavior, 
he has been particularly interested in exploring how social norms, perceptions of justice and fairness, corruption, emotions and motivations, feelings of trust, and predatory policing can go a long way to influence cynicism towards the law as well as the levels of resistance and defiance among individuals or groups in the community. Dr. Akinlabe has successfully attracted more than 17 scholarships, grants, recognitions and awards in Nigeria, United Kingdom, and Australia, including the prestigious British Commonwealth Scholarships, Australian Postgraduate Awards and Australian Endeavour Executive Fellowship. He has also authored and co-authored peer-reviewed journal articles, book chapters, edited volume, and books on policing, police-citizen relations, procedural justice, corruption and accountability, and interpersonal violence. He is the convener of Inspire the Future Africa, a multifaceted leadership hub designed to build and inspire change among young people in Africa. He is also the president of SentWord International Ministries, SWIM, and TalkBridge Consulting. Join me welcome Dr. Michael to the program. All right. All right. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can no, hear you, sir. I want to, I want to, this is not your presentation. <laughs> and this is not yours, your session. I want to ask, how is it possible for a bus conductor, a once bus mean. conductor, to, to almost become a professor? Because I know that the next promotion, your next promotion is professorial profession. Can you... Can I was about you, to ask. Can you please take two, three minutes before you go into your presentation and, and talk to us? Right. Talk, talk to us through that. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, I'm honored to be here. Um, thank you for having me. Um, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are. Um, I think the first thing is that um, your desire, your drive for excellence, your, your drive to break the cycle of poverty, your drive to change the status quo, um, most times supersedes whatever challenges you may be confronted with. So we have a lot of people who settle where they are um, not having drive. So I think one of the major things for me was the fact that I didn't like where I was. I didn't like what was going on around me. Um, I wasn't born into that kind of lifestyle. I don't, you know, at least an average or below average, you know, upbringing. Uh, but things mm -hmm. change along the line. Um, but I told myself deep down within me that things, something has to you know, change. So each time I go out, do, you know, doing the job I was doing as a bus conductor, um, I make sure when I get back home, I invested two hours every day to study. Oh my um, God. <laughs> People settle for oh. where they are without looking at where they're supposed to be. And even now, I uh, don't lose like, your thoughts. Don't lose your thoughts, please. Your your yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back there. So uh, most time people just um, okay. lose the track of as in forget that they're supposed to go to a destination. So they settle for where they are currently. So for me. I knew that being a bus conductor is not the definition of my life. It's not the end of my life. It's not what God has planned for me. So I decided that, okay, this is what I'm going to do to break the mold. I know that God gave me a gift and it's been brilliant. I've always been an exceptional student you know, growing up. And um, I remember the first day I went to the conductor. One of my sisters said, I can't stay with her because... Um, you used to be an outstanding student, you used to be best in your class growing up, and how would you end up as a bus conductor? I'm like, look, I have no job, I need to feed myself. You could barely mm. feed me, both of us, so I need to feed myself. This is a job that is readily available now, and I have to do it. The most important thing is that not losing the track of where I'm coming from and where I'm going to. So each day, even most of when I do the bus conductor, when I talk to passengers, they knew that something was odd about me, the way I speak, the way I carry myself. I may say we're getting close because as a conductor, you're not going to put on tie and trousers and everything. But at the same time, when I communicate with passengers, like, what are you doing here? I remember there was a young lady, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. I laughed. 
And so when I come back, most of time we leave home around 4.30 in the morning because you need to, it's about rush hour. You need to target people going to work as early as 4.35 in the morning up to like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. to rush at 4.30 in the morning, go for the job. And at the end of the day, uh, we work till around at 11 most times and we've made the delivery the money for the day. And suddenly the car will break down, the bus will break down. We have to take it to the mechanic workshop and start fixing the bus, bus again until maybe 3 p.m. And that is another rush hour. Then we we'll get back to work and we'll work from around 3, 4 p.m. to like 11 p.m. at night to be able to meet up the delivery for the day. So at the end of the day, I've worked from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. I may not even have more than 15 naira or 20, or 20 naira. As at that time, it, it wasn't a lot of money. So I'm thinking of 97, it wasn't a lot of money. So when I get back home, my brother wasn't working. My sister was there, you know, because I had to move out of the place. So I was living, sleeping in the church. I was barely homeless. I was nowhere to accommodate myself, to put myself. So I only left my bag at my brother's place where I sleep in church or wherever I could find. So um, I would still have to take from that money. We have to buy Gary. So they will look for somewhere where they're about closing for the night, like a you know, restaurant. It's Buka. We will know Buka. We'll go buy soup. And mm. so it, after many years, I see that I ask myself, most of those soup were not freshly made. So maybe soup they gather from different people who left their food, really didn't finish the food, and they just put all the soup together. And that was what they used to sell to us coming late at that time of the night. And we have to make Eba and eat that. All of us at home that night. That's what we're gonna eat. Then the more we have to watch. Can, can you can you can you hear me, sir? Your your yeah, your audio is a bit cracking. Okay. Um. Is it better now? Uh. I think it's still there. Probably is the internet because I'm using a sound system that shouldn't allow noise to come into this at all. So it filters every noise. So I use them road uh, road uh, podcaster. That's what I use. So there's, even if there's a call, it won't go in. So I don't know what. Uh, but where it's, it's coming it's from. Yeah. Giving us a cracked, cracked audio on your background, so we can hear really? you, but it's not very, very um, clear. What about now? Maybe you should disconnect and connect again from the audio. Audio. It's I'm on the sound system, so. Um, uh, what about now? No, it's still, still it's still it's still there a little bit. Really, I can I don't know what is going on. I'm using a system whereby there shouldn't be any static noise. Probably it's the internet. Maybe my internet dropped, but even then, my internet is strongly connected. I don't know what is going on. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I think we can move on. We can move on with is that. now. Uh, a little bit. It's still, it's still there. It's, it's still there. Um, I don't know what else to do. Still not clear. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can actually hear you. Uh, but it is it's a bit crowded by a kind of a cracking noise. I'm actually hearing the feedback. I'm hearing like a noise too now. But this is not from me. Now, uh, still not still breaking, yes, like it's uh, like it's static stuff. Um, uh, how about if you use the, the this computer sound directly? Because, uh, one of one of my I'm unfortunate, I can't because the way I connected my system, if I disconnected yeah. the sound, the entire thing you know, closed down because it's on the system, okay, yeah. The system, so uh, we must we must hear this story today. <laughs> the system, so uh, and it's only coming up when you're speaking. Like now, it's not this. Yeah, yeah. I think because I can now that you're speaking too. I'm getting the feedback is fair, but it's not like from me. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay, speak. Let's see again. So, what about now? 
Uh, it's still a little bit there. I think we can go on now. We can man we can manage with what it, what we have there. Yeah, because as you speak as well, like the feed, I'm hearing the feedback too, but um, probably is a system or is it waves or whatever it is. So I don't know, maybe the internet dropped. So as I was saying, I I have this, you know. I will get back home with media bar and everything, but I have to like wash the clothes I wear that day, dry it. I'm talking about 11 p.m. now that I got home, you know, dry it, um, make sure I have the next day cloth ready. We we'll finish eating, then I have to still pick my book and study for two hours. So most time I will sleep around at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. sometimes, and by 4.30 I must be awake. So I barely wow. sleep more than two, two and a half hours, three hours, averagely. Um, if I have enough sleep, that is four hours. So if we close early before 11, then I may likely have four hours. So I'll see like, you know, study two hours. So I make sure everyone used to wonder like, what is wrong with this young man? Where are you going to go to? Like, why are you studying so hard? Even the church I used to sleep, they know that I will study, I'll read my Bible, then I will study, I'll pick my book. I always have my book there. I always have something to read, and I'll be there. I will study. I will read, and everything. And some people be just began to just wonder, like, who is this guy? What mm. is what's special about your life? Why are you studying? You're already a bus conductor. Why are you studying? And um, <laughs> after some yeah, after some period, I got a better job. I work in the factory, um, seven to seven, so twelve hours fast. So that was like an improvement. I had to like work in the factory. And all this period, I was in my early 20s, so it wasn't like maybe I was, um, I said I was conductor, I was, I think, 19 or that about. So, yeah. um, so early 20s, by the time I was already working in factory and trying to sort things out in the loop with you, you know, uh, industrial avenue, I had to like write applications. So I would write applications, leave the address open. So I write applications for different kind of job, factory worker, and manufacturer, this and that, I would claim all those stuff. Then I will fold them, put them in my folder. I will be walking around Lagos looking for a job. And so, and why did I stop bus conductor? I actually broke my leg. I was about jumping out of the bus and the tire, you know, pressed my leg the other way. So I fell. So I broke my leg and I was, you know, incapacitated, limping for almost a month. Um, that was how I stopped bus conductor. I'm like, God. If you can heal me from this, I'm not going to do that because I just knew that that wasn't meant for me. So and when I got better, I started looking for a job in the factory and I ended up working. So I walked into Metropolitan Industrial you know, Company then and they were like recruiting at the gate. So I stood with them, quickly addressed for the industrial company name and address at the application, on the application letter and I entered. So and I was employed and I started operating two looms. So we're you know, working on moving sacks. We're making sacks, you know. I'll be operating two machines at the same time for the next 12 hours. So, and that alone also created a problem for my hearing. There was no PPE, there was nothing, there was no boots, there was nothing on your own. And the noise in that factory can be so deafening that after like a month that I was working there, if you stand behind me and call my name, I won't hear you. It was that bad. So I would get home, to even sleep. I would see hearing the fucking noise in my brain while i'm asleep so um gradually uh, i moved from there again i became a clerk in the supermarket so it's gradual process until i had to like tell myself i'm better than this i became a school counselor like by going to school to motivate the young people and that was how the school started the, the placement employment and were paying me uh, for not even having a degree but i was doing their motivation and they were seeing changes in the life of the kids in the school and that was how gradually I uh, began to generate, change my church as well, moved to, you know, redeemed. I actually was led to go to that redeemed church. So when I got there, I saw young people of my age, younger than me, older than me, doing great. I'm there like, wow. this is what I do it. Then I, most of them thought I had master's degree because I don't speak better than most of them. So they thought I had degree. I, I was in drama group. I was a Sunday school teacher. I was active in the church. I was doing so many things. Well, we are brought my maybe I have a master's degree until they got to know that I don't even have a degree. 
but just because personal development. I've read every book by Bishop Oedipo, Dominion Publishing House, from first book to the end of everything published by Dominion House. I've read every book I could lay my hand upon from Miles Monroe. I've read everything I could lay my hand upon from, you know, Mike Modoc. I've listened to his Mike Washington logo, William West Africa. And I was hungry. I would trek miles to go attend conferences, to go attend meetings, because I know that for me to move from where I was to the next level, I can't go on empty. I must load myself. I must feed myself. Remember when God told them, like, wake up, eat. It is not because of just physical hunger. It's because of what God was preparing him to achieve. So most time people dream, oh, yeah, I want to be great. I want to be this. How much are you investing in yourself? It becomes like an aberration for me, even till date, not to study, not to add something to myself. It becomes an aberration. I have not broken that habit. I haven't. In the day that I will not add value to myself, maybe I'm sick. Even when I'm sick, I will still find something to read or watch something or just add knowledge. You see me sometimes when I'm studying, working here, I'm playing YouTube video. It could be on some a topic, it could be on an environment, it could be about an animal, it could be on anything. I'm playing the video and I'm working. So I'm enjoying that process while at the same time doing whatever I'm doing. So I must add something to myself. So you can't go on, you can't embark on the journey of excellence or future that you desire without adding something to your life. It is not possible. If you're really serious, mm -hmm. then you will commit to it. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in fact, eh, <laughs> the, the thing was just entering. Uh, great, great, great insight. Great challenge, really, sir. Great challenge. Really, 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 really wonderful to hear this story. Uh, I think maybe we'll have uh, a session sometime in the future where it will just be to dissect this story. You know, without rushing it or jumping, jumping over some of the key things that you know may be a lesson to us. You know, um, so we're really, really excited to have you, and uh, I, I want to hand over to you. If you want to share, is if you have a slide you want to share, you can use the share share button to share your screen. We just wish that the cracked noise at the background will just disappear. You're still there. You're still there. <laughs> It's still there. And everything is like perfectly silent here. So I don't exactly know what is going on. Let me check. Is there something on my screen? There's nothing that is open. Mm -hmm. How How is the noise like? What is that? Is the noise? It's just like a crack, you know? Like a cry, it's like a, a, a cord is touching something or it's not properly plugged in. Okay. Like two cords, two uh, opposite cords are touching, or, not, or one cord is not properly plugged in. Where about now? And it's, still, it's still there, it's still there. It looks like we have to do it, we have to just to make do with that. I don't know what is going on. I should move my microphone from here somewhere else. And see if there's going to be a change. Because that's not supposed to be a feedback at all to the system. Yeah. Um, what about now? It's, it's, still, it's still there. So I don't know. Ah. <laughs> uh... Sorry, guys. Just give us a minute to see if we can get that sorted because we want to have the best experience um, in this session. And Dr. Mike is ready for us. So let's see. Give us two, three minutes. Um, I think it's still there. Doc, I think we can move on. I think we can move on, Bishop. So um, let, let's move now, on. Let's check again. Where about now? Still there. Know what is it like? This is the first time ever, like in 
anywhere I've ministered, people always wonder why my system is super clear because I use this road, you know, podcaster pro and it filters out noise. I can't even receive call when I'm doing live video that mm. there never be any static connection. That's the way it's built. Um, so I don't I don't know exactly. Probably it's the app itself with the waves. Um, that is, yeah. I don't know. We can move on. We can just move on. Yeah. So um, is your slide ready? I can show it, show it on the screen. Um, yeah, I've, sh I've shared my sh slide. Can you see it on the side? Yes, yes, it's on the screen now. So if you go on full mode, that would be wonderful. Yeah. So is it fully on the side? Let me see. It's not full mode on the side because. Let me see. I can um, see your heart again. So once I go on full mode on the on wave, then I can't go on the PowerPoint. If I go on PowerPoint, I can't go on wave. So. so it's okay now. I can't hear you again. I can't see you. I can't even see you. So, yeah, because um, I'm just trying to. It's it's on the screen, but it's not a uh, full size. On your page. Yeah. So we can we can hardly. See. Yeah, I already shared it on full mode on my side. So what happens? I use a forty-nine inches monitor screen. So um, okay, you can go. You can go back to presentation mode now. I think we'll be able to see it. Okay, now. Yeah, yes, yes, we can. All right, so um, once again, I appreciate the opportunity to to talk to uh, those people and thank you for reposing the confidence in me to be part of the speakers for this meeting. Um, so the theme of this um, of the conference is um, repositioning for excellence, and I'll be talking on mental repositioning for excellence. So it's quite a broad um, area, uh, but I try as much as possible to glean out some nuggets and try to make them um, relatable as much as possible. So um, I'm, I'm not able to time myself from my phone. My, you know, I think my resource is here, but my phone is in the you know other room, so I don't have access to anything. So whenever my time, uh, I'm supposed to stop. Please, I'm just speak out from the other end so I can hear you. So no so problem. Have, yeah. So um, excellence is your natural bed right. Uh, people should know this. Um, excellence is not a math for just a group of people. It is not just meant for people who are born in wealthy background from you know certain countries or from certain profession. Everyone has a natural best right to exhibit excellence, to live in excellence. So uh, when you were created, God has excellence in his mind. When he was thinking about you, he actually formed you with the thought that you're going to showcase excellence here on planet Earth. So he is an excellent God. And so definitely he's not going to make something that is not excellent. So irrespective of your looks, your disabilities, levels of education, geographical location, backgrounds, and other challenges, you were made to showcase the excellency of God. So you must always remember that. You must always program your mind to remember this and look, I may be where I don't want to be right now, but I know that I'm better off than this. I 
are maybe an average student right now, and maybe an average employee, and maybe living in an average nation, and maybe working on an average job or below average job, but that does not define who I am. So a lot of people get stuck at a place of, oh, you know, um, I, I failed, I failed this, I failed that, and because of that, it comes themselves failures. No, there's a difference between somebody being a failure as an event and being a failure as a person. Hmm. You become a failure as a person when you choose not to try again, even after you failed. When you resign that, oh yeah, this is it for me. I'm done, I can't try again. Because I've tried seven times and I failed, so that, that means that's the end for me. Then at that moment, you resign, decided that you are a failure. But when you see failure as an event, that like you only failed in a certain area of your life, you failed an exam, you failed, you know, even a marriage, you failed on a job, that does not define find who you are. There are people who had actually failed in marriage the first time and got it right the second time. Hmm. There are people who, while they had their two feet, they could not achieve anything. They were not known as athletes, but they lost their foot, maybe one foot or both feet. And yet, with the special feet that was made for them, they became Olympic representation for their countries. They began to win award. They began to change the status quo. So there is no situation that you can ever be in today that somebody has never been there and they also want to overcome that situation. So if you see that, oh yeah, because of my father, my father came from a poor background. So because of that, and he was poor. So now you give back to me, oh, after all, I'm also going to become a poor person. Then you are resigning to faith. You can tell yourself, yeah, my father rode rally bicycle. I'm on, I must not end on the on, on bicycle. I must be better than my father. So excellence is reachable. You must always understand this. Excellence is reachable and attainable. Excellence is not an abstraction. It's not something that is a fable that you cannot touch, that you cannot feel. There are thousands of individuals in our contemporary world uh, who live and strive in excellence, who believe that, look, if it's not excellence, I'm not going to do it. If I'm going to do one thing in a year, I must put a touch of excellence into it. So you can put a touch of excellence to whatever you are called to do. You can be a pastor and yet you are different. Most times you see people where they where they find the village as a pastor, they, the, the way they are so organized, when they only have two members, the way they respect time, the way they follow up their members, the way they resume at office. They keep the time as if they're working for someone. Truly, they're working for someone. But they can choose to sleep at home and not go to work. And nobody's going to question it because maybe they only have two members. So when they build on that attitude, that habit of excellence, by the time they have a thousand member congregation, what they have developed from day one will become part of their life naturally. So a lot of people have this what we call destination disease that, oh, when I become a leader, oh, when I become the MD, oh, when I finish my university, oh, when I get married, that is when I'm going to show a touch of excellence. Oh, when I have a beautiful house, that's when my house is going to look great. How organized is your house? When guests come into your house, they sit in your sitting room, do they feel repulsive? Is your house dirty? Do you even make attempt to put sweet perfumes in your house? Do you make attempt to decorate your house? How organized are your sofa? How organized are your TV? Dr. Mary Gay, I'm sure he's been to my office in Australia. I, I can't remember. I know Dr. Uh, Dr. Peter has been to my office. My office was a reference point at UNE. So when people say, Oh, have you met Michael before? You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, do you know that office on that block where, you know, you used to smell good perf, good, you know, perf 
nice and very beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that office. That's the lecturer at that office. Now, in my current university, the same thing is happening. People make reference to my office. I haven't been able to enter my office for the past number of days because we had some flooded issue. So, for health and safety reasons, we are banned from entering the building. So, I was talking to my head of department and said, like, Oh, Michael, oh, what are we going to do with your beautiful office? Oh, my God, this and that. Everybody makes reference to my office. Everyone complain of how small the offices are in the UK. My office is very small. It's like one third of my office in Australia. But everything there is so organized. My office is so clean. My office smells great. The same thing my house. Where you are, I don't live in a mansion. But I am sure, and I know I'm going to live in a mansion very soon. But the same thing I have here, I'm going to replicate it when I live in a mansion. So you can put a touch of excellence in anything. When I was working in the factory, the way I carry myself, they would say, oh, yeah, you look like butter. You look like somebody from a good background. When I share my story, most of my colleagues in UI, they find it difficult to believe that that's not true. We know this guy. Because why? The way I carry myself. I've had people here also, yeah, Michael, oh, I'm sure you're from a very good background. You always smile, you always laugh. The way you carry yourself, your cologne, the way you wear your suit, you always clean. Your academics most times in the West don't have for me, they can confirm. They don't dress, but they don't care about their looks. But I'm the exception. Why? I'm not dressing well for my now. I'm dressing well for the time. Maybe I'm going to become U.S. Secretary General. Maybe I'm going to become the President of Nigeria. Maybe I'm going to have a global position. So I'm dressing for that moment. So there's nothing you do that you cannot put a touch of excellence. So you can be an excellent student, excellent academic, excellent engineer, excellent pastor, excellent doctor. You can decide right here and now that you become an excellent person. It is a decision. It's a mindset. It is a mindset. I, I used to tell my friend of most time, when I get so busy here and I use my, I'm, like, I don't like doing dishes. That's one of my, you know, weak points. I don't like dishes. So, whenever I cook and everything, I will leave dishes in the kitchen for some days. And after the second or third day, I don't want to enter the kitchen because just me, if I have seen those dishes, I feel repulsive. I don't want to go in there. I don't want to touch anything in the kitchen. I don't want to eat anything from there until I sort them out. I didn't get to that point. I, I don't have OCD. But because over the years, I've learned how to organize my life. I've learned how to put things in the right order. Then it reflects, becomes, you know, uncomfortable for me when I don't do the needful. So, what is excellence? I'm sure that speaker might have established this, but let me just go over it again. From Latin derivative, it's from excellentia, which means to surpass, to surpass your equal. To surpass everyone around you, to excel above others, to outshine them, greatness, the quality of being great, the very best among the best. So when you put the best together, you still want outstanding, you're still better than the best put together. It also has a great derivative that we are ready. Directed, which means full realization of potential. I can go on for hours on that word potential, but I'm not going to do it too much here. It's, you see, most people live all their life without reaching their self actualization. For those of you that know about the hierarchy, you know, Abraham Maslow's hierarchies of needs, there are different levels. The highest point, the apex of it is self actualization. Most time people live so much in average that they never set goals that will be too big for them to achieve. But they can do step by step build up to get to that goal. The moment you get your self actualization in life, you realize that when you are not actually there yet because you need more room to set better and bigger goals. So the full realization of your potential. Is excellence. The inherent function of your ability, of the quality to carry, moral virtue. You be the outstanding that no matter how people are corrupt around you, you choose to be different. No matter how people 
can do the same thing. They can, you know, go on and offer bribe and collect bribe at work. They can be sloppy in business. You don't want to be part of it. Your moral virtue is too high to condescend that low. In Hebrew, mm. it means distinction, glory. The word glory here also stands for splendor, exaltation, to be bold in high esteem, to be outstanding that among everybody you are what out and standing above all of them. Mm. This is excellence. So the state of being exceptional, that is what you really want to define it. The state of being exceptional, of having a stunning reputation, reputation. It may be a stubborn man, but when you talk of excellence, you will find in him. Can your life be defined as an excellent life? Can people see you and say, that man we know him is a man that is known for excellence? Growing up, I was a bit competitive when it comes to my academic success. I was a bit competitive. I wouldn't say too much, but I was a bit too. I don't like anyone beating me in class. That's what I'm used to. I want to lead my class. I always want to lead. And when I got to university, I had the same habit. So most people didn't understand. Most of my lecturers didn't understand my drive. Some of them thought my own was true that I was excessive. So we grew up in a context whereby they can actually clip your wings before you fly. Hmm. Yeah. When you operate with people with average mindset, with average mentality, who don't have drive for excellence, if you spend too much time with them, it is either you begin to wallow in that same average mentality or they begin to look for ways to clip your own because they think your own is too much. And I'm sure some of you, you've heard that before. Oh, your own is too much. Is it the only one there? I was surrounded with those people with people who spoke mentality. So they didn't really understand me. They didn't really know where I was coming from. So I was setting record. They didn't like it. I was more respected from where I borrowed my courses, geography, than my department being there as a counseling. They had issue with me. Classmates said my own was too much. My lecturer, for some of them, said my own was too much. It was only one professor then who taught us creativity. He was able to observe. He said, look, my, he said something to me one day. He said, Michael, now, when I see your class, that a lot of people are going through different trajectory. So when I see you, every time I see you, when you speak, when you ask questions in class, I know you're operating from a different level of creativity among different from your classmates. So when he said that, I made sure I got close to that professor. At the point I began to sell his book, I became like a serial for him. And I closely monitored him. So when he gets to, before he comes to class, I would have gone online, go to Cyber Cafe, spend the night, browse about creativity, read about Edward De Bono, look at everything about creativity, go on emotional intelligence, then a gold man. So I was prepared when my mates are going to party and clogging and talking around. I'm reading ahead for the man's class. Because the man already said it for me, and I cannot come lower than that. An excellent mindset will always want to find another mind to excellence. To excellence what having a sterling reputation, being known among your equals that you're different. They may not like your gods, but you're different. The quality of being outstanding and extremely good, the quality of becoming remarkable or of having a global benchmark. So you're the one setting that benchmark that everybody will have to struggle to meet. So you surpass everyone who set the record. Here, there are key words you can find here. Quality, state, outstanding, sterling, reputation, extremely good, remarkable, global market of benchmark. So when you are aiming for excellence, average is not good. Even good is not good for you. If it's not excellent, then it is nothing. To obtain excellence in any venture, you must make up your mind. God give me excellent spirit. God 
Wow. <laughs>
Wow. The Bible says what? I've said what? He said the man's mind is where? Where is treasure? Where your treasure is, that's where your mind will be. So if a man's mind is at the tallest skyscraper, maybe Butch Khalifa in Dubai, in the UAE, if you give that man 10,000 naira, it's a matter of time. That man knows that what, my mind is up there. My money will be on my mind there. Those of you ask me, how did I move from being a bus conductor to where I am? Mindset. He knows me way together in Australia. You can only walk with me within 5, 15 minutes without me saying things that will challenge. Because that's what I think about every minute. Being able to see a way out of situation. Being able to imagine. And I don't allow any adversity, situation around me, to clip my wings. I always dream. If I come to a place, if I feel the place is not serving any purpose, I pack my bag, I move on. Rather than sitting there and whinge and complain, no, I move on. I rather go to onto uncertainty, pursue my dream, than staying at a place and maintain the status quo and live an average life. I don't want it. Daniel made up his mind. Are you making up your mind today? What exactly are you making your mind to do? What exactly? Is it all about the wealth you want to achieve? You meet young people these days. Oh, what's your bar? You know, ah, new. <laughs> I can drive you out on now. That's not dream. That's not ambition. And you wonder why people don't take you serious? I see a lot of young people. That's what they think. What they want to buy, how to sign their courses. And that's why a lot of young people are running after, you know, quick money, ritualistic money, because they think that is what defines success. Our definition of success in our society has become what? Has become convoluted. That's not excellence. Hmm. Like I said, it starts from your mind. To become a man or a woman of excellence, you have to first decide that you want to become an excellent person. Then you want to be different. When you put litter the street, you don't want to litter the street. You pick your bin and you make sure you get the flavor and you can dump it, you dump it there. When people urinate on the roadside, you choose not to do it. When people are off offering bribes, you choose not to do it. When people churn queue, you choose to stand on the queue and correct everyone because you are a part, you have a perfect example. Nigeria is the way it is today. Most African countries are the way they are today because the citizens themselves choose to live below average. They have average work mindset. If everyone in Nigeria change their orientation and believe that what our future is in our hands, nobody will vote for some of the current politicians. Hmm. Choose right. It starts from the mind. If you look at the policy that the CBM government just introduced, politicians are fighting it, citizens are fighting it. Nobody even understand the mindset behind it. Nobody even understand the long-term goal. Look at you in Singapore, talk about Singapore being a developed country today, from developing country to a great nation. The leader has to change the national consciousness, the national mindset of the people. If a leader comes in today, he's not giving people money, he's not bribing people, we hate them. I find people who are brought me for financial support and I don't have it. I'm a salary earner. Yeah, I'm doing well. But the fact I'm doing well doesn't mean I should go to get tenant because of you. Sometimes in a month, I will get more than 20, 30 people asking for help. How many people am I going to help? I'm not El Shaddai. <laughs> I'm not El Shaddai. <laughs> because I want to play the role of El Shaddai as a pastor that I somebody and he said, you shall die. Hmm. You shall die. I also need to save for my future. I don't want to end in poverty. I also need to plan for my own children. I also want to plan for my own life. I want to plan for time and so I can't give out my entire income to you because I want to be a nice person. The moment you say no, these people stop talking to you. They stop liking your post. They stop following you. They go around and lie about you and say rubbish about you. But most people hear this news. Don't even ask questions. To know why they are, you know, they are maligning you. Nobody cares. It's about oh, they show a pretense without no solid basis. And a lot of them, I see them when they crash landed, when they begin to suffer psychological abuse, 
put my mind in a better thing. I rather put my mind in things that will give you better results. Excellence is a thing of the mind. When you decide mm. to be excellent, when you approach God, then God will turn you at the fire. God is a giver of excellence, but you first must build up your mind. There is a responsibility to ask Him. Say, is anyone of you, does anyone of you lack wisdom? Say, ask. Ask. Do you know? I want to give you a formula today. You know, the book of Matthew says, ask, seek, and knock. Is that not correct? Yeah. Cry, now ask. You see, ask is the most important tool, one of the most important tools that can change your life. Wow. I am. I will always ask the worst you can do is to tell me no. That's the worst you can do. I will never come and ask you for money. But I can ask for opportunity. I can ask you to train. I can ask for other things. I will ask for promotion at work. I will ask for a better pay. I will ask why I've been to work today. I will ask why I should go elsewhere and work if you don't want to help me keep me here. I will always ask. But if you write down the word, ask. Do you know it also completes the entire ask, seek, and knock? It's an acronym for the other two. A is for ask, S is for seek, K is for knock. Ask. So, Bible didn't make mistakes by putting that ask first. A lot of us don't ask. I just said, a lot of you don't receive because you don't ask. Now, when you ask, you ask a miss. You ask for bread and butter. Instead of asking for the substance. Now, you see, mental fortitude is one of the tools as well uh, that can help you achieve that. So, you know, I'm talking about, you know, uh, mental repositioning. So, have you noticed that those who achieve excellence in any field are often those who went through some of the toughest situations in life? When I put this there, I didn't know that Dr. Pay was going to ask me to speak about my background. So, um, <laughs> I just said that. But let me tell you, I can, you know, tease out the experience from my own past. Because I've done that at the initial stage. I'm not going to dwell on it. I have checked, I've done so much, read a lot of autobiographies. I've read, I've followed some of the some of the topmost people in businesses, in tech, in this and that, in different fields, in academia, none of them. Those who have better background are very few. In fact, some of them are less than five percent. And studies have actually shown that what people who have better background, that most of them that they receive the inheritance of their parents, that those who keep the money are less than two percent. Most billionaires, most people coming of industries, never inherited those positions from their parents. The ones you hear about, the outstanding ones, never inherited it. They formed their own future by their mental fortitude. So, long before they could even spare their names. Now, the time when Nigeria policy was changed, you know, in the it was late 77. It was, yeah, it was the election of 79, 80. It was UPN, UPN, MPN period. And there was change of currency and a lot of things with my dad was on special courts. And when crossover state, you know, it was crossover. Now that part is acquired on now. So we were at home. My dad was in Enugu. So there was no telephone. There was no telegram. The village was there. was not even electricity at that time. That village in Crossover state now, you know, very close to me now. We didn't have means to change our money at all. Even those who send money to banks could not get new currency. A lot of people have to depend on unripe mangoes. Those mangoes is about mango. It's about a month or two months for mango to get to maturity and life. A lot of families will have to dig holes in their kitchen where they cook, put unripe mango. Cover it with sand and soil, put ashes and cook on top of it. So when they finish cooking, the mango will soften up. And that was what people were eating. Hmm. And then we, 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 we shared part of that 
lifestyle because that was, we had money, we couldn't even buy anything. We didn't trade by butter. And that was a special cause in any way. Some of us knew poverty. Told somebody and said, at the time I've been working in the farm, I'm talking about working for my dad in the farm, it'll be raining. My dad would say, would say Dad, this rain is too much. My dad would ask me, like, Do you have oil? Is your head is colander? So is the water seep, seeping through the colander and going into your body system or your intestine? You say, No, so they continue to work. So he's a military man, but we're working in, this, in the rain. When the sun is so intense that your back can melt in butter, can melt butter. So that is to say, are you a sheer butter? So are you melting? <laughs> so I want to say, I already know what is called now the rain or in the sun. Working for my dad. At the point I was looking at him like, this man is really my father. But the man planted work ethics that today my colleagues know. Most of my recent book of I had to stay away from you know, before meeting this, I didn't sleep on the 2 a.m. I finalized my presentation at 2 a.m. I've done it for the day, so I sat down there trying to put the finishing thought, change things. I finished at 2 a.m. before I went to bed. And I was awake and I'm past four. So I'm, I'm not going to bed. And after this meeting, I had another meeting. And why am I telling this? Mental fortitude. It's not an excuse not to push yourself. It's not an excuse. Not to do something or you show up. It's not an excuse. So despite the challenges they confronted, these people chose to beat their circumstances. They chose to change the narrative. How, what would be your story to your children? What would be your story? That because my father is poor, I also end up poor. Because my father is not educated, I also end up being uneducated. Because my father never left Nigeria, I also I'm not also not going to leave Nigeria. What story would you tell your children? Hmm. Research has indicated that these kinds of people have certain attributes that gear them towards success and excellence. These attributes are called mental fortitude. The thing that made them to stick to it, they stick to evenness, that kept them there, that kept them going. They just have a different mindset, different mental fortitude than every other person. So, what is mental fortitude? Mental fortitude is a type of emotional control that you can learn. In the same way that physical strength is a sort of mastery over the body, mm -hmm. mental fortitude is a mastery over the mind. So there are things you can do to change your mindset. The scripture emphasizes to the Lord that it has to renew your mind. So you can also renew your mind. You can exercise your mind. You can be deliberate. And these days and time, your cell phone is even a tool that you can use to program when you get alerts that tell you quotes. You can go on that side and places this, some of this stuff. Keep them, you know, record them, record voices, record, you know, write few things and the thing pop out at every hour. And they are positive things. I have the mind of Christ. I'm going to be better than this. My future is secure. Those words surround yourself with them. You are friends that are positive. You can create an atmosphere that is positive. When I'm driving long distance, I have messages I listen to. I have men of God. I have, you know, uh, business leaders. I have personal development coach that I listen to that word. It could be seven hours drive, it could be five hours drive. I don't want to hear them or any other thing. I sit there, drive, listen to them. I have worship songs. I have this guy, if you're Sunday, and yeah, that's eight hours of his song. And if those of you know to listen to me, Sunday, it will sing, speak in tongues, and also those moments charge my atmosphere. And so when you're in the West, you may not have time to sit down between vigil and be praying when you pray. You must create moments that energize you, that strengthen you, that help you to grow. So you can definitely exercise and build mastery. So, in the same way that physical strength is a sort of mastery over the body, mental comes a mastery over the mind. I've said that. It takes mental strength to be brave in the face of danger, in the face of pain or other difficulties. It takes mental strength for you to finish doing another work where somebody already slapped you during the day, wanted to steal your money. But by somebody enter the bus, not wanting to pay, and you are almost at the point of cutting the person, abusing their parents, their mother, and their father at home. Or when somebody spits on you,
you, I don't want to speak that. It takes mental courage to come back from such work and still invest two hours to study and not think about sleeping. But putting the sleep aside, it was cheap. What my mother was saying, when Nigerians sleep, that is a way thinking about Nigeria. You wonder why, even after many years, he died in 1987, May 1987. People still talk about the politicians want to stay part of that life after Olowo. Because the man was a thinker, was a man who exercised his mind. When you are long gone, who still remember you? What will we remember you for? Even when everyone can no longer go on, it takes mental fortitude to stand up and say, I will be different. Mm. I will go all the way. No matter what the situation, I will go all the way. I will not define myself. It takes mental fortitude. I will not do what other people do. I will stand for what is best. It takes mental fortitude to say, yes, I know I made a mistake, but I'm not going to repeat my mistake again. It takes mental fortitude to say, look, yes, I was wrong. Please forgive me. But henceforth, watch my life. I'm going to be accountable. I promise you not to mess up again. It takes mental fortitude. To even become vulnerable, it takes mental fortitude. And look, yeah, truly, you are things are starting like you know, you've done them. Rather than denying, you do not. I'm sorry, I messed up. Please forgive me. And when people see that you are genuinely asking for forgiveness, and every people I know will forgive you. How many of you know Sam Oposo died recently? The man, a few months ago, he messed up. Had an extramarital affair. In America, and the woman got you know, pregnant, had a baby for eight. And truly, the news went out, and at the end of the day, Nigerians as usual began to judge him. People went after him. Because most times we had our own sin and judge that they went after him. One thing stood out from Samuel Koso. He asked for forgiveness and suspended himself from ministry. You know where I'm going? Do you know the week he died? The Monday or Tuesday of that week, they came back on social media, shared a post talking about friends that we invite him, excuse me, that we invite him and not pay him or not treat him well. Whether they will invite other ministers or that get him with their foreign and they need to send him to school specially, that he doesn't want that kind of friends anymore. But he said, no, Welcome back, Eagle. People began to welcome him back. So I went on that punch and vanguard page where the shape is welcome at his comment, and I began to see comment. Not a single person, you know, our Nigerians have been very judgmental. Not a single voice stood against him. Not a single person said otherwise. And I said, I'm like, wow. That there is power in asking for mercy. There is power in not covering your sin. There's power in owning up. I said, look, yeah, it's my fault, but I'm sorry. Unlike somebody else, there's another Hollywood actor that no matter if, whatever he shares, even when the thing they said, people went after him, they attacked him because he refused to even realize that he made the mistake. Mm. But also hold up. That's not exactly where I'm going. As much as the family, that same with the man died. Now the question is this What about if the news that came out now, I mean, it came out after he died, that came out then, just now came out after his death? People will say we don't be careful. People will say ah, he lived a fake life. But God gave him a chance to correct his error. And he took that chance. He took that chance. Sandro Posa is a man with what? Mental fortitude. For him to even become vulnerable. To know that what? I can fall, but I will bounce back. I will ask for forgiveness. David was like that. A man that what? That has a contrite spirit. And that was why God said, I love David. And that was why God rejected us all. Vulnerability. So being able to, to, to own up is actually a sign that you have strong mental fortitude. So there are four key elements of mental fortitude. Seeing and shift as opportunities. Eliminating self-doubt. Never giving up. Then taking ownership of your own destiny. Can you come again, sir? Can you can you come again, sir? Okay. Uh, on those 
Okay. Eliminating self doubt. Never giving up. Taking ownership of your own destiny. Thank you, Those sir. Are the four key elements of mental fortitude. Seeing hardship as opportunities. Eliminating self doubt. Never giving up. Then taking ownership of your own destiny. So I'm going to address each of these four elements one after the other. The first one, seeing hardship as opportunities. The ability to recognize opportunity in adversity is a defining characteristic of mental fortitude. By seeing opportunity in your current challenges, in the challenges in your neighborhood, in the challenges in your family, in the challenges in your life, seeing opportunity in it is a defining characteristic of people with mental fortitude. To have excellence mindset, therefore, means standing tall during your challenging moments in life, that everything will be crumbling around you. We are standing tall. Your ability to stand to confront adversity. I said, Yeah, I know I feel, yeah, I know I go, yeah, you know, I know I don't have money, but here today I am standing, I'm not backing down. I'm not going to compromise my stand. I could be offered money for sex, but I'm not going to you know, compromise my stand. I could be, you know, asked to, to cheat like every other person. I will not compromise my stand. I will sit down and I will study. So Daniel stood tall despite situations and circumstances that kept all his contemporaries heads bowed in Babylon. There were things that kept everybody bowed, but Daniel chose to stand for something different. What are you standing for? Are you using your challenges as an opportunity to mess up? Are you using the current situation to create a narrative to swing the people? I've seen believers who come up with stories. I had a case of a brother who came around and complained to me how things are so tough and blah, blah, blah. You know, he's a single servant and God and, 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 and all those stuff. And as a result, I, I was like, I was so concerned. I said, too money. And he just sent me two or three weeks after that Christmas is approach, you know, I do not forget, forget him. I said, I'm like, what is wrong with people? I just gave him money, but not even up to two weeks. You're asking me money for Christmas again. Am I your father? You are a grown up person like myself. You are a father. You have to a wife at home. You have children. I should be responsible to pay your bills. I don't, you don't work for me. I don't work for you. That was not even the last of it. Then I let that come to know that the same message is said to me. He has said to every one of our colleagues that we preach together. So the same by sending money, every one of us sending money. So he does that batch by batch. So when he leaves this batch of people, we go out and that batch. So that was what he was doing and cooking, cooking up stories. Eventually, when I was going to go to support him to assist him, I gave the highest of the contribution because I wanted to stand on his profit at the end of the day. You know, we decided that we're not going to let him know those who contributed or not. After giving that money, barely a week after, he said, Brother, reach out to me. Ask him for financial support. We just contributed money to empower him so that he could buy something that he could use in exchange for money. But he had no idea that I was part of the people who contributed, who would get the highest, the almost times four of what every other person contributed. When he did that, I said, I'm like, this is an habit. This person is using his current situation or even a fictitious situation to do other people. This is a man who will die as an average or below average person because of his mindset. I hope that people are doing well. I you are not utilizing the money for some substantial. After that, I just ignored my son in these messages. And I'm sure every other person stopped me. So tomorrow, when he needs genuine help, nobody's going to rise up for him. Please don't use your current situation as an opportunity or as an excuse to be given. demanding. Don't consider me 
stands to people. Respect boundaries. Respect people's boundaries. What they want, how they want it. Respect it. So those who see hardship as opportunities always rise up, no matter how many times they were knocked down. When they see setbacks, they always get re-energized, learn from it, and then give it another chance. They understand that excellence is a process, and they must keep at it, no matter the number of times they have tried. The Bible says that one, that the righteous man falls seven times, and they shall work what they need to be also rise up again. Before, don't compromise your stand. Remember, the top is your target. You know, the over rock of the ladder, the top. So keep climbing, keep moving, keep advancing, keep moving forward. If you fail at any step, reassess yourself. What did I do wrong? What am I going to do right? Move on. Keep moving. Keep advancing. Any action thrown at you, keep moving. How do you achieve excellence by seeing action as opportunities? Transform your mindset. Get better by changing your mind from being an average thinker and from pessimism to a champion. Is this champion don't win the race on the day of the race? Champions are few, champions are made behind closed doors. Most champions they've won before they show up at the Olympic Stadium. Most champions they've won before they even came to the scene of football match. It's only in Nigeria or in Africa that we believe in voodoo or believe in spiritual that is going to help us to win match. So, when they are investing millions to train their athletes, when they are investing millions, take them to the active cycle, expose them to cold weather because they are going to play in Canada, expose them to the situation they are going to confront. Every day they are not going to get used to it. Some of them will cough, some of them will fall sick, they will cough out blood, but there are medical doctors, DA, supporting them, guiding them. And with time, their body begins to adjust to the temperature outside externally. They begin to play. They don't have you know, uh, rigid muscles anymore. They call become less effective on them. And after months of practicing in that cold weather, they get used to the Arctic cycle weather. So when they get to Canada, in the cold of winter, when Nigerians are there shivering, shaking, they are what speeding up and beating us. Because we never prepare. We are waiting for God to come and change the atmosphere for us. We are less pray. We just have shakalaba, shakalaba, shakalaba. Baby, baby, baby. So go on and do it. So go on and do it. I can't buy you, buy your time. It's all lie. Important thing aside, I want promote spirituality above simple reasonings. Things we pray for in Nigeria. Here in the West, most times they are not prayer points, they are government responsibility. Dr. Vile can confirm, I'm sure some of you, you live outside Nigeria. Mm. Dr. Vile can confirm, when your wife was in a critical situation, they flew her with helicopter, am I right? Yep. If that had happened in Nigeria, God forbid, mm. that woman may not make it, how much more the glory? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
He shall have to pay for it. <laughs> oh my God. Let's, be, let's change our mindset from how we think right now. Some of you are still where you are because you haven't changed your mindset. Change from an average thinker. Don't become, you know, dependent and demanding on people. Ask yourself, what am I bringing to the table? Ask yourself, what am I contributing to Nigeria? Not the evil things, not what you want to take, what you want to take from it, but what are you adding? Are you part of the solution or part of the problem? See what is possible and not what you have experienced. If you are judging your life based on what you have experienced alone, that experience will likely keep your back on the ground. Gratitude. It's another way of seeing action as opportunity. No matter what, be grateful. When you are grateful, you will not be entitled. Mm. Let the smallest thing be of value to you. Be grateful. Because there are thousands of people killing, that will, that will kill themselves, kill, do anything to get to where you are currently. You think yours is bad? Go and ask people around you. When you are not grateful for what you have become entitled, don't think you are entitled to have good resources. You didn't work for them. You didn't work for you. They have their plans. Not even that of your dad. Don't be, your dad will work for you. Don't be entitled to your dad's inheritance. My father died in 2014. I have never stepped my foot after he was buried. Whether land, whether farm, whether anything, if you can afford to buy property in Lagos, I can afford to buy land in Lagos. So there's no amount of land in has that is going to mean anything to me. I bought mine and I'm still going to buy more than I'm going to leave for my children. Mm. And my children, I'm also going to make sure that what they buy their own land as young, you know, as possible. So that they will not need to depend on that because I can give mine to charity. I can donate mine to school. So go and buy your own, empower them to buy my <laughs> So they don't need to depend on inheritance. You can't even depend on your mom or your husband or your wife or your uncle or your auntie. No. When those dependency mindset come from a place of ingratitude. Most of them, oh yeah, but I'm grateful. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. But we are still expecting them to do more. We are not even grateful for what they just done. We think the world revolved around us. No, the world doesn't revolve around you. The same when you're asking a man for support, he has 10, 20 people asking him for the same support. One man, how is he going to resolve it? It's not possible. Keep a journal of the picture of the future you desire. Write down. What do you see? Where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? Where do you see yourself in 20 years' time? When ideas come, record them in your voice or write them. Get Google Keep Notes. Who has free notes you can download on your phone? It's called Keep, Google Keep Notes. Write things down. Like this message, I've been putting them together. Since time I got invited, ideas that they're dropping. When I'm driving, when I'm going, I'll put it down and I was recording them. Keep notes, keep journal of the future you want. There are companies that have finished applying for my notes. I may not have started, but they are here. They are wanting to come. All I need to do is to read and translate them into reality. Write. Write down the excellent result you want in specific areas of your life. Write them down. I got a result yesterday. There was an exam I sat for, you know, and I got a result yesterday. That I passed. Now I'm a fellow of higher education academy. That becomes an additional fellow. So it makes it easy for me if I need to work in another university in the UK. The moment you know I have fellowship of higher education academy, it makes it wow. easy. Wow. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> I'm a qualified higher education teacher, lecturer in the UK, and that certificate is applicable anywhere in the developed develop West. Keep advancing. Set record for excellence. Set record for what you want. Don't live an average lifestyle. Then John, John Mason, I remember his book then, Conquering an Enemy Called Average. I read that book, read all the series from John Mason. There was another book then uh, by 
the Cuban boy, uh, uh, I forgot something about giants. I read that book. I'm still looking for I don't know two people from my library. I'm still looking for a book. And currently I was even looking for the stock copy on Amazon, but I couldn't find it on ebook. Buy books, read, have a picture of excellence that you want. Eliminate self-doubt. Be confident. Be confident. Because most times what you are afraid of is also, also afraid of you. One thing I discovered since I stepped into leadership here in the West is that most time, most of the people step into leadership position, they are also afraid. But they did it afraid. They step out being afraid. So a lot of us, I know that a lot of us Africans don't step out because of this self-doubt. We are afraid to apply for the higher position. We are afraid to, you know, to aim at. Not our professor made it and confirmed. My previous university, I was due for promotion. I dissolved my line manager. He said, yeah, he's not too sure, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I said, that very day, I went on and began to apply for a job. All the job I applied for, I got interview for all of them. I applied to UK at the very day. By the time I took my current job, I was not only offered promotion to the next level. To level I was in level A. I was offered promotion to level C. And not just level C, I was even level C step three. So I was five steps above my current position. And by the grace of God, I'm at the peak of that level. And now I'm moving, trying to move up again. I started to discover my line manager. I'm moving forward. If they are seeing otherwise, there are other universities that will advertise. <laughs> what can happen in the same room? But for me to say, oh, oh, I'm afraid, oh, oh, they are better than you. Mm -hmm. You better kill me first for me to agree to that. No, they are not better than me. I have the power that raised Jesus from the grave. He is living in me. Why should anybody be greater than I am? No, I'm mm. not afraid of you. I think my VC, I will handle it with action. I mean, present, I will treat you like human, human being. So that's why I have some African things. Oh, my God, Michael is so attractive. Oh, Michael is so confident. Because over the years, I've learned how to handle such situations. I'm not afraid of you. Currently, I'm a line manager, and I have a lot of people working under my program. I am a program leader, and I have a lot of people working for me. I'm the only black guy. Being black doesn't mean I can't lead. There's no difference whether you are black, whether you are white, whether you are green, whether you are pop, whether you are pink, whatever you color you are. I'm a leader. And I'm barely two, two years here when I apply for the leadership role. And there are people who have been here five years, ten years, who are afraid, who are able to step up to lead. Can I shock you? I did it afraid. I thought, oh my God, what if I don't perform? Because I always do one of these things I'm not going to perform. I said, oh my God, this is not you. Get there first. If you can't mm. you figure it out. And trust me, I have been figuring it out. And months upon months, I'm still here. They have not sacked me. So it shows that I'm doing well. Defeat your negative self belief. Your self doubt defeat it. <laughs> Excellence is achieved through boldness. Those who are confident and dis are decisive exactly about what they want. When you want something, you stifle know, about it. I told my wife when I came to her, I didn't stifle. I told you, I'm going to marry you. I'm like, I'm marrying you. And I told you, we'll fix it in. And I went back and I got married to her. Most times, again, you are there stifling and speaking all the story. The man who has action has taken over your guest, the wife, the wife to be. Why are you dating the guest seven years? Are you to sell her? It doesn't make sense. Most times they are not taking care because the man, the man or the man can't take confidence. And there are some women as well who refuse to exhibit confidence when they're supposed to exhibit it. And again, they just went like, really? I didn't marry a puppet. What is going on here? Excellent people take action even when they are not sure of the outcome. Hmm. Most times you will not know the outcome. You will not even see the end of the, the rung of the ladder, but just take the first step. And then the next step. And then the next one. One distinguishing factor is that they know even if they make mistakes, they will recover. That is different between people who have mental fortitude and they know how to eliminate self-doubt. They know that, yeah, they make mistakes. 
Jesus said, yes, and so, the woman that I dated proved to me the kind of woman that she married. And so what? Don't tell me they know the industry. I was a serial date. I can ask you as I see that you're not my kind of person. I walk away. Rather than sitting there be crying and be having pity party. No, 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 no. Sister, God bless you. Um, I thought I had God clear you. I was wrong. Maybe it was my desire for you that I like you, your long legs, your nice feet. That was what attracted me. But after getting here, I realized that, ah, no, maybe you are too good for me. I can package it that way. You're too good for me, new. I'm sorry. I apologize. No best. If I realize, okay, some of them they are so nice in facially, but they are for money, Jojo. When they descend on you, when balance, I don't have energy for it. At me, I can withdraw easily. I don't have energy. I will just withdraw it to my shelf. So if it is too much, I shut down. Oh, that boy, ah, please. <laughs> Hmm. Oh my God. Was it that something that happened to them? But I'm wow. sure Daniel left them behind at the stage in his life. Why they were already 
bowing down to the idol of the land, Daniel was a man taking the standard. Oh my God, but this is... They were still maintaining the standard. Bible is a complete book. Bible would have mentioned them that Messiah, Shedek, and Abednego, and Daniel was thrown into the pit of lion, together with lion, with Daniel. But Bible did not record, Bible did not mention them. So some of us, we, take, we stay stuck with friends that we have grown. Imagine as a very shame that you have grown. Do you look good? You're not going to look good in it. Your stomach will put you out. Your armpit will be stunted. Your neck, you can't put in your pie and so many things. Some of us, that's our picture spiritually. We stay because we're here. They are my long-time friend. Long-time friend does not mean they are your what? Long gold friend. Your long term gold friend. Maybe your long term friend. But then your long term gold friend. Are they seeing the same thing with you? Surround yourself with people who are positive. People that are going in the same direction. To face your fear, change your confession from I can't do this or to I can do this or I will do this. Let me tell you what I used to do in UI as a manager student. People wonder why I got at the top in my class. Do I was in my first class? But we didn't understand what I was doing different. And I said, do that to now. I have a way of sizing people up or sizing situation up. And I'm giving you a secret that you can use it and it's going to work for you. I have a, a way of sizing. And even then, when I explain, when people say, yeah, I can talk to any girl, no matter who you are, if you like the bar, my daughter, I will talk to you. The worst you can do, tell you no. And most of ladies like guys who are confident. I don't even have anything more, so not even when man, the way how this entered in Lagos, when I was in Boston, I'll just go there just to prove a point that I can talk to any girl. I, I didn't date them. I wasn't messing around. I walk in there, hey, hi, what's your name? Um, you know, my name is Michael, I will talk to them. Get that number, I'll talk to them. When there was no number, I collect their, you know, outside address or whatever, I walk away. Most of them never check on them again, but just to prove a point. I size people up, I size this up. When I go to UI, on the level, so I met some of the 200 level students. I met a class governor, if you end up seeing this video or this post, um, I met the guy who was leading at one who led the under level class, who had the ISC GPA. I met him, I met a few other guys, and I asked them, that, what did you score in GC 101? What did you score in GC 102? What did you score in GC 103? So I, I spent one of them, ask them questions about the modules, about the units, about courses, you know, that they did it on the level. What they got. So I, I would jot them down and go, okay, Yemen got this, so Kune got this, this guy got this. So I went to one man, like when I look at him, I know this guy, I'm not, this, I'm not smarter than I am. So I went to what did you get in this? Ah, he shared a little, ah, that course is very tough. Ah, those are people here. Ah, it's got people used to fail. Ah, blah, blah, blah. He said, I said, what did you get? They said he got, I think, 62. So I looked at him. I said, this man with all his, your, your accent, you know, with his mark on his face and everything, that I know that what I'm from the poor background, but I'm still better than him, that I know if this guy could get 62, I should be able to get 70 in this course. So I made up my mind of that very day, the very week we resumed. That that course is toughest at the faculty level for all the levels in the life. I'm going to get seven points in that course. So I made up my mind that very day. So I got home, listed all my units, all my courses, and I put marks that I'm going to get in front of them. Can I shock you? Every mark I put in front of each one was what I got, except for two. The other two, I exceeded the marks. Out of 14, Modules that I, courses that I took, 12 of them I got the exact mark I put in front of it. By sizing situation up, mm. I see the same thing till date. That I size situation up, I size, I size people up. If this person can do this, there's nothing stopping me. Number one, I'm a child of God. Two, I have the Holy Spirit in me. This person may actually be an unbeliever. If I can get it, I will get it. When I went to Cambridge with the same mindset, I had a friend who went to Oxford. 
the next round I need to be invested in. When I spoke to him, it was in Oxford, he made first class from political science. He was the second best to make first class in that department. People stay in somebody's office, you can find him out. Spoke to him. I said, if this guy will go to I I made it I made it this guy was the first class. I'll go to Cambridge. So I applied and he had to apply to Harvard, the top five universities in the world, Princeton, Cambridge, Harvard, you know, apply to all of them. But this of it, I only submitted for Cambridge at the end of the day. So I got admission, my first application to Cambridge. With two one, I got admission. I didn't get scholarship because I didn't know how to follow the scholarship application through. But the second year, I began to check and everything. Called the lost Richard, Cambridge nominated me for the scholarship. With two one. The power of sizing situation up, of imagining that if this person can get this, I can also get it. So he went to Oxford with first class with two one at five point nine four seven, which is five point nine five, which is six point zero. That was what they rounded up my grade. Do I had six point two? So power that be cut my grade down to 5.7. After fighting it, they got it to 5.947. That even came thought it was ridiculous. But I ended up in came with a full scholarship by sizing situation up. Your mental fortitude will increase the more you do things that make you nervous. The more you do things that make you fear that can make you feel that you're going to lose up. The more you do that, the more you master the art of confronting yourself down. You see, leaderships are not formed overnight. Leaderships are accumulation of every little position you've been raising your hand to lead. That is what sums together to make you shine the day you need to shine. You don't become somebody who beats him to lift yourself down, who achieves greatness overnight by not eliminating gradually the gradual things around you that create doubt that make you to think otherwise don't conquer those minor minor things around you when you get up there you will see how this limit yourself down i have colleagues that have been coming around that unofficially this is something i tell them i need this and look why do some of them i have met who's been there for 20 years and they have applied for promotion and i said Promote you. You're not going to just be invited. You're coming. Let's promote you. You have to apply. Have a worker. Then I don't have enough permission. No, just submit what you have. First, be rejected. I'm not okay. I got rejected, but I got feedback on what I'm supposed to do. And then you go ahead and do those things, and you apply again. But sometimes a lot of us we are afraid of being knocked back. We are afraid of receiving a no. And because we are afraid of receiving a no, we refuse to walk, we refuse to do anything. Some of us, because we post something on Facebook, nobody likes our post. We get dejected, we get depressed, we go on our person's page. We did not send the person posted because they got 1,000 likes, we refuse to post again. That is you giving up. That is you. Limiting yourself down, do yourself to yourself down. Even when you are nervous, still go ahead and do it. And the more you do it, the more you get better at it. So never giving up. That's the first point. Commitment to the task. You must commit yourself. Those who achieve global recognition can trace their achievement to one major quality: commitment. I've met a lot of people who want to do a thousand things. They never follow through to the end. I've met a lot of people who have great ideas, fantastic ideas. They start well, but they give up along the way. They never finish it. Tomorrow you meet them again. Oh yeah, this is what I'm planning to do. This is they never finish one task to the end. And I know many people like that. You cannot achieve Excellence, you cannot achieve global recognition by not sticking to it, by not committed to that task to the end, to make sure that you may do other things, but this primary objective, this primary thing must be finished. The Bible talks about Zero Babel. He said, Your hand and actually laid this foundation, your hand 
to finish it. He will accomplish it. So in my family, in my spiritual living, we don't break records of abandoned projects. We don't keep records of abandoned projects. So if you are a child of God, I don't know whatever you believe in, if you have so many abandoned projects in your life, it may be a time to reassess yourself and ask, is this part of the virtue of being a child of God? Because in my household, in God's household, we are zero battles. Nothing get abandoned. Nothing die halfway. We finish our task to the end. Anyone can begin a task, but not everyone can follow through to the end. Many people are commissioned to do tasks, but not many people think about the implication of their service delivery. I've given people opportunities to do things for me. Things as minor as the sign and deal, things as minor as sewing clothes for me, things as minor as buying something for me, they goofed. And most times, I give them little opportunity because I have bigger opportunity to give them. They always fail. And most of them are Christian, they are children of God. They always fail. And I need to ask myself, where is the commitment to excellence? Where is the commitment? Recently, I went in court, I gave it to a killer, and I just called over the phone. My friend delivered material to him. And when I got it, was like they, they have one or two things to finish that he assures me is going to bring that cloth to me wherever I am. And truly, a few hours after, he rang me up where I used to say, I'm at so place of someone that in the And the guy picked bike from where he was and he delivered that cloth. He did not waste time, he did not run out of time. And this guy is a Muslim. So I've been using him, he's the one sewing for me. And I know other believers, other Christians that are giving words to that. Some of them even chop my money. And you beg I'm happy, you, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, please, sir. This and that, sir. I keep I give money to do things for me. They never discuss it again. They never deliver the service and they never mention my money again. I have people who ask me to lend them money, and I gave them money not because I lend them, but it was a test. Because if they are brought by the money, I would ask them to worry about it. Some one year, two years, three years, they never mention the money again, and I laugh. Tomorrow they will need bigger support, they will need bigger help, but they can't get a dime from me. Yeah, I'm one of the disciples of my monarch. For what you permit increases, what you tolerate, you cannot change. That's the way it is. It's part of wisdom. And they have their leaders, they be educated, but not that they need substantial money because they don't build trust. They're not committed to the task. You can't trust them with something substantial. So, commitment to excellence keeps you focused on quality delivery and not just quantity or noise making. We have so many noise makers. In fact, social media has created so many noise makers. And to the point that sometimes I don't like opening my social media page. Because for the things I read, <laughs> journey they never experienced, journey they never embarked on, things that they cannot prove, they share them and they pollute so many minds. And when you come up with better reasoning, people begin to abuse you. As well as some people, they are sad. You must come to Twitter and say, Look, I have Twitter, but I use my Twitter for my academic job. I don't want Nigeria to that space. It's too toxic for my liking. I, I've paid my deals. I don't want insult from any brief raff. I don't want insult from anybody who can never un unlace my shoe. I don't want such. The fact that somebody's on social media and I want followers on social media. No. I am contented with 10 people who are quality people following me. I don't want crowd. Remember Jesus? He withdrew from the crowd. I'm not sure in his day nobody has record, record of crowd like him. In a modern time, if we translate the crowd of Jesus, we leave anybody on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Yet, Jesus had the 120. Jesus had the 12. Even among the 12, Jesus had the 3. He learned how to withdraw. Even from the 3 as well, he will withdraw from them. By the time they get to Mountain Gethman to pray, what did he do? He withdrew even from the 3. Had them to be praying, but they withdrew from them. Don't let 
like social media followers you know deceive you oh i'm an influencer who are you influencing because father you have one million people following you what have you achieved in your life beyond that social media post because you are buying followership or you are posting nonsense and you have one million people who are chair people who are really contributing to, to knowledge they don't have followers my supervisor does got the highest award you can get in australia she's an australian laureate my most age mate my peer supervisor you know this woman has no LinkedIn account. This woman has no Twitter handle. This woman, I'm not even sure she has a Facebook page. And yet, she had won all the millions who can win in Australia. She just won another one recently. Not a single social media page. Do you think she's not a successful person? Do you think she's not an achiever? Mm. I'm not one small boy has two million people on phone like that. Oh, I'm better than you are the flesh of the appraisal. You know, you are just in brands. No, it's not your fault. Social media gives room for every riffraff and every Tom Dick and Harry to think they are influencing people. And the next you want to be talking about politics. People who are doing research, who are contributing to knowledge, don't even make noise about it. They're not noise maker. They are impact maker. They are living in part of a fake generation. With your big head that you are screaming on your social media, there are people making decisions that you can sleep at home safely at night. There are people making decisions about policing. Not the black eye you put, oh, black eye matter, you are shouting and running around. There are people doing research, contributing to knowledge, looking at the impact of your actions so that the society will not be run down. You are then calling yourself influencer because you are making money from endorsing products. I think you achieve. If they take that page from you, what are you? Who are you after that? If that page is suspended by the most of if that page is suspended on Facebook by Mark Zuckerberg, who are you? No wonder some of them go on YouTube and they'll be crying. They should restore my page. Oh. The way you tell is what I'm using, that's my life. Yeah, truly, that's your life. Truly, that's your life. Commitment. The future generation, people will leave impact behind and not noise makers. So, mental fortitude plus commitment equals excellent result. It was excellent result. In fact, you cannot be committed to any given task or willingness to deliver excellent results without commitment. Daniel was committed to eating the right meal, despite the abundance of other unhealthy meals in the palace. Other meals were available. I don't feel like despite the fact that there were so many men around, I never told myself, never sleep around, stood my ground, I knew what I believed in, I knew what I committed. Sometimes opportunities are there for you to mess up. When you look at the right, look at the back. Look at front, look at everyone. Shop members are not there. What do you do? Do you see maintain your Christian values? Do you see keep true faith? Are you still committed to the task of the faith you believe in? Are your values still intact? When there are no people, when there's nobody watching you, are you still committed to the task? How do you achieve excellence by not giving up? Ask yourself, why do I need to achieve excellence? What is my ultimate purpose at the end of this? If you cannot define this, you may have challenge keeping to the task. I told you, I wanted to break the backbone of poverty. I wanted to break the cycle. My father didn't go to university. I've never met someone who is outstandingly brilliant than my father. I was only able to go to standard school. I didn't even go to modern school. But when you see my dad is handwriting, when you hear him speak, you think the man has a PhD. And look at that. I don't want to end that. But I just have acknowledge. I'm a Spanish man. He's a brilliant man, but nothing to show for it. My father was a police officer. Now I don't research in the policing area. He wanted me to become a police officer. When I went to Navy, I said, no. My mom didn't go to school at all, but she was able to read and write. She taught herself how to read and write. When my mom speaks, you think she's a graduate. I didn't want to end up that way. So, I went to school, so my dad said, you to No time is too late. Some of you are hearing me or you don't hear this post. No time is, is, is too late. Even if you are 50 years old now, even if you are 60 years old, you can still go to you. You can still study. You can still change the story of your life. You can still change the narrative. You can break the cycle. You can be the, the difference. I became the first among my father's children to go to university. First degree, master's, second master's, PhD. I became the first among my father's children to travel out of my 
Nigeria. I became the first among my colleagues to get scholarship. I get a scholarship right from Nigeria. So I became first and first and first in so many things. Now other people are getting degree, but I had to break the backbone. It was an ancestral cause, I had to break it. And it was not a cause, I had to set the path that look, it is possible. Stop giving the excuse. So when you define your purpose, it will help you to keep focused on the goal. That look, this is why I'm doing this. This is the reason why I'm doing this. That will keep you not to give up. Is it to break the cycle of poverty in your family? Is it to have a better opportunity uh, than my parents? Is that what your aim is? Is it to show that I serve a living God? To prove to me that look, here I'm a child of God. I can be born, I can be SU. At the same time, I can be the best in my field. I can see the best in my field. Most of the modern tech and everything will have Jewish people behind them. Jewish people. Some of them may not believe in Jesus, but they are saying the covenant of God over Abraham. They are Jewish people, most of them. Music industry, assessment, Hollywood, everywhere are dominated by Jews. Whether you like it or not, they are doing fantastic. They are God's people. So you can say, serve God and be different. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit living in them. You believe that the Holy Spirit living in you. And said, I will bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto that. Holy Spirit will bring them to your remembrance. Have you thought about activating that for your studies? That you, you can get your exam or after you have to be there to prepare. Then when you forget, the Holy Spirit can remind you. But that was the school. Another thing I used to do, I used to create the mental picture of my lecturers. So when they walk into class, I always sit in front, I have a strategic place where I see. So when they're walking into class, I form a mental picture of them. So they come walk into class. They are just relating teaching and everything. I've been looking at them. So my brain capturing, having that camera, you know, capturing them. So when I get home, that very day, I go back to my notes, flip through 15, 20 minutes, for a mental picture of them coming in. As I close my eyes now, I can still see one of my lecturers, you know, Dr. Uh, Professor C. Blessed memory, walking in from my lecture theater. This was 2002. All the men, the clothes he was wearing, the shoe, everything, what he has in his hand, what he said, the first thing he said in the class, I can still remember. 2022, how many years? 20 years ago. I formed that picture. So when I get an exam all, when I forget anything, I can close my eyes and come back to that day while he was speaking. And I can see him walk into class, what he did, exactly how he began to speak. Then, when I remember, I begin to write. That's why you can hardly see me in the exam and my notes will not be full. Not only seeking, you can hardly get several points in this course. I used to get them. Why? Because he likes to use and or otherwise. So, when you put that, when you're writing this work, you also understand people. So, I write the way he speaks in class. Say, so, I'm reading your work. I like reading your work. You make me feel proud to be a good teacher. But what was I doing? I was mirroring his personality in his work. And I do that a lot of my lecture courses that he said you cannot get several points. I mirror their personality in their work. I go above and beyond, read why, add it to it, complete. So put in so many additional factors. Sometimes I've done a call but I didn't know what to write because. I didn't prepare so much. I was sick before that. But I had to go to Nigeria. Don't give me sick leave or whatever. But I read when I was sick. I was reading about my school, my book, you know, uh, purpose and all those stuff. So I brought it into psychology of adjustment. The things I read for my school and my book, I brought them to my coursework. And for the first time, the woman said nobody gets seven points in my work. Nobody has ever got seven. The woman is teaching from 1970 now or 1980. I broke that record. I got. On the dot, seventy by writing what I read from my small row and my book in that course. We could be rich, we could remember in that course. You can become a global influence. You can become a change maker by deciding, by having a mental fortitude, by believing that you can achieve excellence, by pursuing your goal without giving up. You can achieve that. So, you know, 
you want to stand out from the crowd? Yes. Your why and the means to achieve excellence will come to you. Last one, taking ownership of your own destiny. Those who want to achieve excellence must have internal locus of control. Locus of control can be both external and internal. So, in psychology, uh, we believe that the people who have external locus of control blame people for their achievement, for their failure, for their mistake, or whatever. They always ask somebody to blame for it. If it's not their father, maybe their husband, maybe their wife, maybe the you know, the town they come from, maybe this, maybe that. And they use that to even relate to other people. When people do things, oh yeah, it's because they are they are Jebu people, because they are Udo people, it's because they are Ibra people, it's because they are, you know, uh, Kogi people. They use that same measure to judge people. So, locus of control has the effect on mental fortitude and how people pursue excellence. Those with internal locus of control are aware that who they become depends solely on them. No uncle, no father, no mother, no husband, no wife is responsible. Who they become, it's their responsibility. So they have internal gauge, internal measure that tell them, hold it, it is your responsibility. Take ownership of this. You make a mistake, you group, take ownership of it. It is your fault. Nobody else. But what do I do next? This is the next call to action. Move on from Those with external locus of control blame others for their inadequacies, for their failures, for their experiences. Oh, my uncle is stingy. When I needed admission to school, I did not get support. I did not get this. And they could not use the little resources they have to maximize productivity. They couldn't. They blame other people. But there are people who are in your condition as well who decided to become better, who change the narratives without needing to blame anybody. And let me tell you something which I've discovered. The moment you, you begin to take ownership of your own destiny, God begins to position us around you. I have siblings, I have people who are like blaming one uncle or the other or for why they are who they are or because they live with those people who did not help them and blah, blah, blah. When I was growing up, I never believed anybody owes me anything. I visit people, I would have carried my transport fare to and fro in case they don't give me money. And most of them, trust me, they will not give me money because I may not even tell them goodbye. I will not be playing their company. I just feel this place is not very friendly for me, Danny. I walk into the street and I'm off. I didn't go there to ask for money or to bid them goodbye. I'm all done. So what they go, oh, yeah, this guy is proud. I want to buy them because I didn't I wasn't entitled to anybody's money, to anybody's achievement. If you give me something, I will appreciate. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. I walk away. As in, I was saying it at the present. Till this day, my adult life, I have never had, except for one person, I have never had to call anybody apart from that one person. I will tell you the story. I have never had to call anybody asking for money in my entire life. Even when I was poor, not even my brother. I was living my brother. Everybody was working in oil company. I never asked him for money. If he gives me, I'm great. If he doesn't give me, I walk away. I was never invited. The only person I will ever ask money from, she actually embarrassed me. And it wasn't my fault. Somebody else was once I asked the person already had a conversation with her. So I would just go based on the conversation he already had. By the time I called the person, ah, I don't have money. Oh. And people will come here and be asking me for money. And blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what? I just said, ah, I'm so sorry, man. And I said, apology. So I walked away. And each time I remember that moment, I still regretted it. That was the only moment in my life. No sibling can ever say that I called them to ask for school fees. No siblings, no parents can ever call them to ask for anything. I never do. But can I show you? God always meets my needs. Because I mean, they don't go me. Even when I wrote letter, when I gave admission to you and I wrote a letter to one organization in America and I want them to support me, they will give me scholarship because I didn't know how I'm going to go to school. But I got that. So when I wrote that letter, I posted it as soon as I stepped out of post office in Oshodi. I had got a 
explain this thing to me. Oh, so now you are crossing the arm of flesh. Ha! I went back. I was crying. I had to fast for three days, asking for mercy. And then three months after, you know, they send letter to go. Then you send it back, back to the send like there's a wrong address. Three months after, I got the letter back and they put no forwarding order. That was the first time I ever received such. That's only like, no, you know, um, there was no back to the send that just no forwarding order, which means I didn't want that two years after that God stopped it along the way. And they didn't forward it. I don't know why, but I'm sure God and I've had my cry and prayer. And that address is incorrect. I see no organization, I said check the organization recently. The same address the been since then is the same address where there was no forwarding order. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is this is beautiful. So much so much 
thought provoking thought provoking insights this this morning uh just trying to bring you up yeah so I should be able, yeah great yeah so much so much thought provoking insight really and a lot of sober reflection from this session um last night we were really fired up really really fired up by dr sam and uh, this morning you've you've brought us down to to really really begin to consider those points that dr sam made yesterday so there is a kind of a connection between what we heard yesterday or let me say kind of a balance between what we heard yesterday and what you just shared with us you know today to 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 place us in the right in the right mindset when it comes to, you know, strive for excellence. And I really, really want to appreciate you for all that you've shared. So if you're with me and you're excited about what you've heard today and you're thankful to Dr. Sam, can you just maybe in the comments send thank you very much or send a clap or whatever it is that you can um, to let him know that you appreciate what you've heard tonight or oh, this morning. Yeah, it's it's night already here in Australia, so uh, don't get confused when I say it tonight. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so we really, really appreciate you so much for this. So now I, I want to ask if there is any question anywhere. If you have any question, you can post it in the chat. Yeah, and it all says it's wonderful session. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, it's 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 really, really, really for me, uh I just want to go and sit down and think about my life. <laughs> and think about my life. These four four strong points, elements of mental fortitude, you know, uh in my my eyes just open to some some new knowledge this this morning, and I'm really grateful. So um, I'm just in a different situation or condition now, mentally, and that's to just go and really, really take my time and think about all the things that I've written down, things I've heard uh, this morning. So if you have any question, can you um, put in the comment session? So I don't seem to see any comment or any question and uh yeah the next thing we're, we're supposed to do which is what you've done is to ask you to share how people can find you uh, but i guess that you've already mentioned that as part of your presentation but for those who who uh, maybe didn't get it very well um you can find dr michael on facebook he has a facebook with a very large followership so if you just type michael you find just Mike, just Mike Olu okay Mike Olu Akinlabi yeah. yeah yeah you find you find him there and you have a website Dr Akinlabi dot com so dot org that's my website okay dot Dr Akinlabi dot org and okay www.akinlabi.org so you i don't know if you have a subscription newsletter or something that people can follow so but uh, it's all right so but if you if, if yeah if you want to continue to receive from dr mike just look him up on facebook and instagram he's always posting um on his page inspiring and encouraging a lot of people and uh, yeah you'll be able to get uh, more of him if you follow him on that so thank you very much sir i i would let you go so that we can take the rest of the announcements and uh, All right, we'll, um, call it a day uh, but if maybe you can just take one minute and just say a prayer for everyone who has listened and blessed uh, bless their hearts um, okay and, um, you know Asking God to position us for excellence in the coming year and help us to do the right thing. Okay. So um, let's pray. Uh, mighty God, we just want to thank you for um, this moment in your presence. You are the God of excellence. 
Um, you are the uh, the manufacturer and you are the beginning of excellent spirit. Mm. We thank you for helping us today. We thank you for how you've spoken to us. Thank you for setting our hearts ablaze um, to understand the importance, to understand how to position ourselves for excellence. Lord Jesus, uh, we appreciate um, you setting the place, setting the pace for us in terms of excellence. Holy Spirit divine, thank you because you are the spirit of excellence. You are the spirit that can magnify excellence in us. We say thank you. Lord Jesus, I commit your people to your hands and I ask, Lord, that um, as they've heard this word, as I had other speakers and they will see hear more speakers, um, I ask, oh God, that their hearts begin to burn within them, that they will not be able to shift their minds away from excellence, that these ones, you will circumcise their heart with spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus. So that what breaks your heart, oh God, will also break their heart. So that what breaks your heart about Nigeria, that God will also put the burden upon their hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I ask, oh God, that when you're looking for men and women of excellence in their various countries, globally, I ask, oh God, you find these ones faithful in the name of Jesus. I ask, oh God, from this moment that you begin to move their spirit. You begin to, you know, direct their spirit towards excellence in the name of Jesus. You begin to speak excellence through them in the name of Jesus. You begin to carry aura of excellence in the name of Jesus. When they enter into room, when they enter into boardrooms, when they enter into their faculties, when they enter into their homes, into their family, I ask, oh God, that the aura of excellence will follow them in the name of Jesus. I ask for anyone who has been struggling with average lifestyle, that have been struggling with average mindset. Lord, I break that spirit. I break that lifestyle right away in the name of Jesus. I ask, Father, that every spirit, every limited self-belief, I nullify them with your word. I nullify them with your power and notify them in the name of Jesus. I ask mighty God that for every one of these people, maybe they've done something that is bringing shame to them, something that is making their head to bow. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, you will blot out the record of evil, you will blot out the record of sin, you will blot out the record of shame in the name of Jesus. For the place of shame, I ask, oh God, you cause excellence to be manifested in their life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for these ones who are starting out in their family to set the pace. I ask, oh God, for everyone committed under the influence of my voice, who is saying, God, find me faithful in my family. That is saying, God, find me faithful in my home. God, find me faithful in my community. I ask, oh God, that you release the spirit of excellence upon them in the name of Jesus. Everyone mm. long, everyone desiring, everyone's heart that is panting for the spirit of excellence. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you release the spirit of excellence upon them in the name of Jesus. I pray that nobody under the influence of my voice will recall Recover, we recover, we recover from the touch of excellence from above in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you are faithful. Blessed be your only name, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, sir. God bless you, sir. Um, I'll get back to you. Um, in no distant no time, as soon as we finish. No Thank you very much. All right, everybody, can yeah, we just Michael. appreciate Dr. Sam and Dr. Yeah. Mike and uh, yeah. um, so my team? Yeah. All right. Wow. So um, uh, it's 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 been a very hot hot session. <laughs> this one, this one um, has. It's like there was a, a, a what would I call a wipe 
that was used on my back to to <laughs> give me some some strokes of cane. Really, really, really tough, tough conversation, tough questions, so tough situations, changing them and using them to create the kind of change in excellence that we want to see in our lives. And as I want to encourage everybody to, and uh, for the, interestingly, the end of the session became clear. So I don't know what happened. I guess, I don't know really what happened, but um, we're really, really sorry about, about that. And I, I hope that it wasn't, the background noise was not recorded uh, so that when we listen to the replay, we get the clear, um, voice of Dr. Mike Akinlebi, but I, I can see that we all were blessed because I see the comments that were coming in um, during the session, and uh, as uh, Dr. Mike was was speaking. So I truly, truly believe that uh, the right information has been communicated, and we got it very, very well. So we, to not take much of our time because we've gone for a very long time, we're gathering again for the last session, for the final session. Um, in this conference by 7 p.m. 7 p.m. tonight, uh, we're gathering again, which is just uh, about how many hours? Just about seven hours away from now. Uh, we'll be live again with uh, Mr. Richard Aku. Uh, and he's also somebody that you want to listen to. Um, forget the fact that we had a you know, technical glitch with the you know, presentation today, but... Um, um, I hope we don't have that this evening when we come back and you're going to love listening to Richard. He has a very, very wonderful story as well, a story of excellence and, uh, you know, how God has you know, helped him to, you know, achieve a dimension of excellence that he has as well. Um, so I want to invite us to be back tonight by 7 p.m. on the dot will kick off again um, at the exact time. And we're going to have a very wonderful session. If um, you're listening to this, you're not a part of Live Excel, um, you can look us up on Facebook uh, and you find our page and our group. You feel free to join the group, feel free to follow the page. And uh, you can also follow us on YouTube um, by searching for Live Excel TV. Just subscribe to it so that when we go live, you receive an automatic notification. Um, we also have presence on Instagram and also on Twitter, which we use to promote some of the activities that we do uh, once in a while. So I, I'll encourage you to follow those platforms if you haven't. And I want to thank you very much for staying with us till this particular time. And uh, I hope that it's not been a waste of your time. And I look forward to seeing you again uh, by 7 p.m. WAT for the final session. So if you've missed any session, this is the session that you can't afford to miss. And it is going to be a beautiful time together. God bless you and have a good afternoon until we see again shortly in the evening. Bye. <laughs>